Okay, so one of the things that I've been writing about a lot lately and got a lot on my mind uh, is um, Taiji Chuan as a spiritual path and trying to get to a sense of what that means. And um, one of the key elements to that you know, is that Taiji draws from one of what's called the three treasures, which are, which are Chan Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism. And in the Taoist, in the very beginning of the, of the Tao Te Ching, there's, we, we have this explanation and actually reappears later in the, uh, in, in, the, in the book also, this explanation of you know, how things are coming together. I guess it, it probably is not in the first chapter that we talk about this exactly, this more later, I think maybe chapter 40, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, the, uh, the idea is that that from the Wuji, the nothing, comes the Taiji, the one. And from the Taiji comes the two, which is the interplay of yin and yang, which then leads, which gives birth to the three, which is heaven, earth, and man. And that leads to the 10,000 things. So, Thinking about that, so we go and, and, and applying it not just to like this, say, uh, the mythological creation of, of the cosmos, but in actuality into something that we can witness every day. And when we're plugged in, we can actually feel this in our bodies. And that is that we begin coming from the nothing. So let's say if you're doing a Taiji form, you before you get into place, before you even have the idea that you're going to do a Taiji form, there's nothing there. There's you're starting with a nothingness, which then you get an idea like, hey, I'm going to do my Taiji now, and then you assume a position, you assume a form, and that form is the Taiji, the the wholeness. To the extent that you can actually activate this state of wholeness, what I've been calling coherence for a number of years now, that degree of, of unity that you can experience then allows you to move and maintain that coherence through movement. And then that leads to that duality, that polarity of yin and yang, then leads to the three, which they talk about heaven, earth, and man, which I, I prefer to think of it in terms of heaven being insubstantiality, earth being substantiality, and the human being consciousness. And it is through the activation of consciously interacting in that way with first embracing the polarity and then then opening to this, this substantial and insubstantial that you then can manifest whatever. That's the 10,000 things. It's the, the manifest world. So whatever you, if we're talking about creating a Taiji form, we start with nothing. We go to take a form. Then we load up the form. And then we split, we separate the yin and yang and then we start to encounter the substantial and the insubstantial, which then allows us to take the various shapes. So the, um, there's a great quote from uh, Martin Buber writing about Tao that uh, I think is appropriate for this. And I'm going to uh, I'll read to you now. It's called, he says that Tao is unity in change and transformation. That's just what I was just saying there. It's unity and change and transformation. And the perfect revelation of Tao is the man who combines the greatest change with the purest unity. So that's very much in keeping with what I've been talking about for a number of times. That is, if you're able to maintain that state of coherence as you go through the transformation, then you are better able to access the deepest level of this art, which le then leads you to this opening of the spiritual 
illumination possible in it. He goes on to say that though, though Tao is the path, order, and unity of everything, it exists in things only potentially until it becomes living and manifest through its contact with the conscious being of the united man. So that that Tao is exists there potentially for you, but until you actually engage it with your whole being, it exists only as a potential. And that, but once you you get into that state of wholeness and engage it, then you are starting to plug into this the way, you know, you plug into the mystery. And the mystery is the foundation of all the internal martial arts. And, you know, Pastor Young calls it the mystery. And that's because it's beyond our ability to talk about, think about, conceive. It, you know, we can't put it into qualities, but it is the source of whatever it is we're doing. He goes on to say that um, Tao appears in men as the uniting force that overcomes all deviation from the ground of life, as the completing force that heals all that is sundered and broken. So the uh, when you do plug into that, then we are plugging into the big chi. But beyond that, beyond even the big chi, there is um, an awareness that comes through that opens doors to perceptions, awarenesses, understandings that are not available to us whenever we are limited to the action of the conscious mind. Uh, does that make sense, everybody? <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna do something with this. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm throwing you to the deep end of the pool here, but I, I got a I got a plan. <laughs> if we're we're approaching this as a spiritual practice as a possible spiritual practice, you know, that is, can we plug into that which goes beyond what is ordinarily uh, part of our lives and becomes something much greater, plugs us, connects us up to something much bigger. So we have this, we have this movement from the, from nothing into something, and then we go and we, from there we split and we start to engage this process in movement. We become part of that Tao that is expressed through this unceasing movement, this unceasing change that is occurring. And we're kind of, we get to leave the kiddie pool and, and swim up into the, uh, into the deep waters and get pulled along by this powerful force that is uh, that underlies the whole the whole system. And the beautiful thing is, we get to keep our water wings. We get, we 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 get to do it nice and easy. And uh, there's uh, we can step in and out whenever we want. 